three things about personal vision. The first thing is to know it. The second thing is to own it. And the third thing I'm going to tell you about it when we get to that point. I'm discussing these things. And in this episode, I want to discuss one further method, a way, or tool, or resource that you can use to own your personal vision. Knowing it has already been done. How do you get to own it? We know that if you don't own the vision, it is easy for that vision to be aborted. You hear of abortion being a debate all over the place. But let me tell you, on a daily basis, all of us are guilty of aborting ideas, aborting our vision, aborting our passion, aborting our purpose, and going to do something else that has come cheaply or something else that promises something at the end of the month or the end of the week, whatever it is, something that has certainty with it. But vision doesn't necessarily have certainty coming together with it. So how do you get to own the vision so that you and the vision are inseparable? One more way, stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. It's been said that the two most scary words you can ever speak to an irresponsible man, especially if you're the girlfriend and you're pregnant, are this. I'm pregnant. The aspect of ownership comes to full circle. I mean, it faces reality right then and there. You know, ownership comes with the responsibility. Ownership is not what kids normally do with their toys. You know, this is my toy, this is my chocolate, this is my this and this my that no ownership in life is about responsibility it's about work ownership is about accountability it's about stewardship and one of the biggest things that we need to own in our lives it is our vision like i've said and i've labored very many times in this podcast these very many episodes that one of the most important things in life is vision personal vision but then the personal vision we've said has three aspects there's the aspect of knowing it but then there is the aspect of owning it which is to me one of the critical aspects of vision that if you found someone who has owned their vision then you find that that person has passion with the vision has resilience with the vision will stick with it will you know choose to be slurred and abuse and whatever but they will stick with the vision for the long haul and by the time that they are ascending to the mountain of success and the mountain of victory they have gone through quite a bit but they could it have gone through quite a bit if they did not own the vision the fact is that it is easy for you to just brush off that vision you know just dump it away and and move on when she says she's pregnant i mean it is easy for you to say that's not my baby uh, and you walk away how many men have, have done that? How many people have done that? Uh, how many people are doing that even as I speak right now? Because they lack ownership. So, once your vision has been crystallized, the most vulnerable part of it is the ownership. And so we are discussing some of the ways in which you can become an owner of that particular vision so that you and the vision are inseparable. Someone cannot tell the two of you apart that when the vision is mentioned your name comes up or when your name is mentioned the vision comes up 
It is because you've gone through the process of ownership. It's one and the same thing. It's not an addition to you. It's not something that someone has band-aided on you. So it's not, it's not an external thing. It's not an appendage. It's part and parcel of who you are. That, that comes because you've gone through a process of ownership. And the process of ownership is actually, you know, two-way. There is the internal natural ownership process, which tells me that you are doing what you were designed to do in the first place, which tells me that you are passionate about what it is. It's just natural. You you were born with that particular passion. Uh, you don't need to be persuaded. It's just in there. It's in born. Then there is an external part with this, which means that you've got to do some things in order for the ownership to be cemented. And these are the things that we've been saying you need to do. Number one, we say that you're supposed to do what we call a power talk. You speak to yourself, you interrupt the conversations that are going on in, inside of your mind, inside of your spirit, inside of your heart by a power talk, speaking the vision out loud. The worst thing that you can do with your vision is to have it on paper and just that's just about it. When someone asks you, what is your vision? You don't know it. You've got to go back to your papers to look for it. No. You speak your vision. You incant your vision. You enchant your vision. You do affirmation of your vision if there is such a thing. You do affirmations of the vision if there is such a thing. And you keep doing it until it is part and part. It just oozes out of your psyche. The more you speak your vision now, the more it's cemented into your spirit. You know that. The second thing that we're supposed to do is to pray about it because vision is something that is in the divine. Vision is not something that is with here, you know, with us. It doesn't begin with us. It begins with the divine. So you ask for the divine. You pray to the divine. And the more you pray for to the divine and the more you present this vision to the divine, the more it's cemented and the more you own it. And then one of the most important things that you can do, I want to talk about this today, the moment you have vision, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is mature. The vision itself and yourself, you are not necessarily mature, the two of you. This vision needs growth. It has to go through a, some kind of continuum to grow, to mature, to increase in capacity, to increase in stature. And one of the ways that this does, you know, you've, you had better grow with the vision. And you had better grow as the vision is growing. That is one of the ways you own it. When a baby is growing inside of you, as a mother, that is part of ownership. It is a part of natural ownership. The same thing when the vision is growing inside of you and you're growing together with it, you're increasing your capacity so that you can match up to the vision, the ownership is cemented. One of the ways to do this is to do research. That is number three. One of the ways of owning a vision is to research. Case in point, you want to become an educator. And that's a vision that has come to you because you've seen the perils or the ills of the education system that are present at the moment. And now you want to do something that is totally different. Your vision is to do build up something that is absolutely different, that is basically a flip opposite of what is existing right now. It is in education. What do you do? You start researching. You start looking at all alternatives. You start looking at the alternative voices that are out there. And you start looking at, you know, sometimes vision is theory. And sometimes it might find some credence in something practical that is either done or has been done or has been researched. So you steep yourself into getting as much information, getting as much uh, visionaries, as many visionaries as possible who have gravitated towards that particular vision that you're championing yourself or any kind of supporting evidence that you can find or even any kind of working theory that you can put into practice in obscurity of course and you prove your thesis you prove your theory right by the time you're proving your theory right, you've owned it. There is absolutely no way you're going to disown something that you've researched about. And I think that's why, it's, you know, these guys who normally go to do the PhDs and the masters and so on, there's a critical aspect that you've got to do. You've got to present your research paper. And if that research paper is not going to be marked as a success, you will not graduate. And we need to do this in the opposite. As in, we need to be researching from the get-go. 
not to be researching at the apex of whatever it is of our theories, but you need to be researching it from the get-go. I'm talking about your vision. The moment you know your vision is in education, like I've said, what do you do? You start doing your own researches, you start doing your own works with it, your own findings. People will normally come up with prototypes. What, do, what are they doing? They are researching. People normally come up with startups. Before a startup can be listed, it has to kind of make money. And there's that, that process. The process of research is paramount to the ownership of vision. You can't just have vision and it's tucked somewhere in some papers and that's just about it. No. The vision has to be researched upon. So that if someone asks you information, personalities, history, the future by the way, or you, what you pro- project to happen, you have some answers. And the more you have information that you've come up with in terms of research on that particular vision, the more you are owning that vision. You know, one of the things that is uh, a sad thing to us as a human race is that you seldom find people who are specialized. You seldom find people who have one area of focus that they are dedicated to, they are passionate about. Why is that? It's because we don't have time enough to cement our ideas and our vision. We don't have time enough to research and become masters with it. I like the word masters because it's a degree. And you don't need to do it formally. to get. You don't need to have a master's degree formally. I can have a master's in the subject of purpose or subject of productivity, subject of resilience, because I have researched on it, talked about it, written about it, spoken about it, worked about it, deployed some of the theories that I think about it over a long period of time. And therefore, I have a master's. I have owned it. Believe me, I will not wake up one day and disown the subject of purpose, the subject of productivity, and the subject of resilience. I cannot disown them because of the research, the work that has gone into them. The research becomes life itself. It grows on me, and I grow even as the research feeds me. So the third way in which you and I can own our vision is to get as much information as possible through research. Get as much data as possible through research. In order to own your vision, you need to be an ardent learner. Like I said earlier, you do not have to have all the information related to your vision once you've been reconnected to it. Nor should you. In fact, people disqualify themselves from their vision because they seemingly think they are not knowledgeable enough for it. You don't have to have all the knowledge. You have an opportunity right now. You have just a seed, just a passion, just a semblance of what you want to dedicate your life to. That's that's all you need. You don't have to be a genius with a vision. You just need to have a sense, a hint, a seed. And now you start working with this for the rest of your life. See, theory, Peter J. Daniels said this, that theory is for the scholar, but pragmatism is for the leader. And that's what you need. You need both. You are a scholar when you just have known your vision, and you need to be pragmatic with it. Knowledge about your vision can be expanded as you get bombarded with questions, you know, upon questions, upon questions. Don't ever shy away from those questions. The more people are asking you and tasking you and, you know, doubting you, that's the opportunity for the vision to grow. That's the opportunity for you to research and get much more information about it. So, number three, research in order to own your vision. Tomorrow, we're going to look at uh, something else, but until then, bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor, Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University. 
found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.